Uh, welcome, my name's Dave. Okay, today we're trying something a little bit different. Um, I realise a lot of my videos haven't been that great and there's not a lot of explanation behind what I'm doing. Um, so this video is all of the fabrication side of the couch. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a running commentary um, with a bit of music behind it to try and make it less droll. Um, now, the car I cut up to do this, the photo of it makes it look reasonably nice. But the car was full of rust. It was a wreck and honestly there was some pretty bad work done to it. Um, could have been saved but the amount of work involved really wasn't worth it for the uh, end product. Uh, plus I've got a much better shell to work with now, uh, which is why I cut this one up. Anyway, let's crack on. I hope this video is a bit better for you guys and I hope you enjoy. All right, cheers. All right, here's the car we started out with. Um, unfortunately, I didn't take much video at this point in time, um, but this will give you a rough idea of how I did it. I just cut the couch a bit too long uh, because it's easier to cut it down than to add extra length. Uh, this bar coming up next is the first bar I put in and there's a video on it just now. So this is the first bar I put in, uh, first piece of the frame, a bit hard to see because of where it is, but it's just a bar that I have plug welded to the sheet metal at this stage. Uh, I bent it in the vise to get the shape. Sorry, I can't get the full view of it. It's a bit cramped in here. Um, but the new pieces, the new pieces of bracing will be going up under here and leveled out. And that is what the caster wheels will get to. And as you can see, I've got them sticking out the back at the moment. That's not the right spot, but. That's how I'm going to do it with the bumper bar mounted here and then a spl splash apron in between the two to hide them. And that'll just stop the, the couch from rocking forward. All right, time to level this couch here. Um, the way I set these up is so that it looks like it's got a bit of a stance, the same as you want with your car. Um, you want the fins to sort of sit at a level that looks like it would on a car. Um, I'm just using some off-cut square steel tube to um, level it out and a, I'm not even sure what the tool's called, but I'm just making sure that both fins are at the same level. Right. Here I'm just starting to make the base framework for the couch. I need something that I can mount uh, the caster wheels on. I'm also trying to make sure that it doesn't hang out too far because I want to add the bumper bar and a what I call a splash apron, or some people might call it a gravel tray. It goes between the body and the bumper. Um, getting this set up right is very important because it sets up the whole basis of how the couch is going to sit. Here I'm using the vise to bend the square steel tube to conform with the inner panels of the couch. Um, I'm, I also use a hammer to hammer the kinks back flat on the sides so that you don't end up with an uneven surface. Um, it's a pretty basic way of doing things. You could cut them and re-weld them, uh, but I find this much quicker. Uh, anyway. Took a bit of time to set these bars up properly, um, but I've got them leveled out and hanging out around the amount that I want them to. It's not too big a deal if you need to cut them back, but you don't want them to be too short. Um, all of this bar work will be hidden under the bumper bar and the splash apron, so it's not a big deal what it looks like as long as it's nice and strong. Here I'm adding braces from side to side. Um, making sure that they are level to the bodywork um, from side to side. Uh, this is to help with mounting the caster wheels. This lower framework adds a lot of rigidity to 
for the overall framing of the couch. Um, as I've probably already said, the body panels are pretty flimsy and they will move away around a lot. Um, it's just a matter of getting everything as close as you can. Um, by doing this, it just makes things nice and strong. And from this framework, we can work up. We've got the basic framework in now. It's nothing real special, but it'll do the job. I uh, had a bit of trouble because these inner panels are actually bowed uh, from front to back. Uh, I did the best I could with what I had. Probably could have done a better job, but at this stage it doesn't matter too much. It's more about just getting some sort of structure inside it to work from. From here I'll add some caster wheels, we've got these wee little ones over here, uh, nice locking ones because that stops the couch from sliding around on you, another mistake I made on the other couch. So I'm adding some angle bracing into the corners of the framework, uh, this does two duties, it makes it easier mounting your caster wheels and it also helps square up the framework and make it much stronger. Um, you, your body panels are going to be pretty flimsy so you want to make the framework as strong as possible. Um, I'm only working with inch by inch square steel tube which is pretty thin wall but as long as you brace it up properly it'll be plenty strong enough for what we're doing here. I'm using rib nuts here to mount the caster wheels. Um, previously I'd welded them on but I found that the heat distorts the metal and can quite often stop the caster wheels from turning properly. Uh, so you know, if you damage a wheel you can replace it much easier if it bolts on than being welded on. Uh, the rib nut tool itself was not expensive and it was pretty easy to find on eBay. You can see in the photos that I messed up a little bit with my measurements. I made the cross bracing a little bit long um, I decided that that was probably a good thing anyway because it just makes it a little bit stronger the longer they are. So I've just added an extra bit of square steel tube into the corner just to make sure that I could mount the wheels properly. Alright, so I'm just putting some steel into the side panels of the boot opening. Um, I've already cut out the boot lip where the rubber would sit normally. Um, unfortunately I didn't get any video of this it was before I actually started doing any YouTube videos um, but it was pretty straightforward just cutting the lip out and grinding it back um, I, I think you'll be able to work that one out pretty well um, these panels will actually form some of the inner structure and then I'll be putting a side panel into it as well uh, to Put a, what I call a door card or a side panel into. Um, I did this on the other couch as well, but you'll see as we go on how that progresses. I did as much bending on these tube frames as I could in the vise, um, but with the curve that they needed in them, I ended up having to cut and re weld multiple times and you know you have to grind it all back so it's smooth um, so that when you do go to weld it in it all sits flush.
Here I'm just extending the framework to the back of the couch and then I'll put an upright between the upper and lower bars. Um, this really makes this, the structure much stronger. Um, it stops your, your panels from bowing out when you sit on the couch. Now I'm adding the uprights between the upper and lower bar. Um, you're kind of floating in space a little bit here. Um, none of the panels are straight. I mean, there's, there's curves, there's angles everywhere. Uh, this goes from measurements more back to intuition, um, but you still need to measure. Um, I've used my angle finding gauge to try and get the bar straight up and down. Um, but it is also broken, so I'm more or less blind by the seat of my pants. Now I'm just adding a crossbar at the top of the back of the seat. Uh, you'll notice I had to cut out where the boot hinges would have originally mounted. Um, I didn't just cut this whole section out because it does add a lot of strength. So I just cut enough that I could put the crossbar in. Now that we're at this stage, we can finally put it back up on its wheels and start cutting down the back to suit the length of the couch that we want. Uh, there is a lot more involved in this and you'll see that later in the video. You'll also notice that I had to extend uh, where the wheel arches originally were. Um, unfortunately, that just falls just shy of where I want the couch to be because of the seat depth. Um, it took a fair bit of work to make these panels, but at the end of the day, it's not a huge job. It's just using your brains. Um, you can do this with simple tools. Uh, it's just trying to get the, the curvature that should be there back into it. You'll also notice that the sheet metal I'm using is from the car itself or from one of the cars I wrecked out. Uh, the reason I do this is it's the same thickness sheet metal, which makes welding a lot easier. Um, and it just means it'll be nice and strong. Uh, also, there's a good section of the curve I need already in the panel. Um, they look rough, but after a good clean up, they worked well. You'll notice that it does take me a fair bit of time to make these panels. Um, there's a lot of curvature there. Um, I needed to put some more or less 90 degree bends into the edge to match the bottom. Um, having a good solid work bench made out of square steel tube really helps. Uh, all of this stuff was actually being thrown out at one of my old work. Um, the top of it is actually a drain grate that a friend gave to me. Um, 
but it's a good solid platform to work from and you know I can mount my vice and my throatless shear or throatless cutter to the bench um, which makes things much easier. Uh, I can also form up edges pretty well on the edge of the workbench. Take time doing the welds on the sheet metal. Um, stitch them far enough apart that you're not putting too much heat into the panel because that will warp it. Um, it's going to take a lot of goes around and you know you'll grind it back and find in the holes and have to go back over it and that sort of thing. Um, it just takes time. Uh, if you go throwing a lot of heat at it, you're just going to destroy the panels. You'll notice I've left paint on most of these panels. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to grind them back. I use paint stripping discs. Um, look them up, they're not particularly hard to find. Um, I bought them in a 50 pack off eBay for less than half the price of what you would in the shop. Um, but as long as you're not running into the, into the edge of the panel, they last pretty well as well. You'll probably notice with these videos there are a few indiscrepancies. You know, you'll see things already done that I then go on to show how I did. Um, I don't necessarily do this in a specific order. A lot of the time it's just getting something done uh, to keep the project moving. Um, sometimes you're just trying to figure out how to get things done. There isn't a specific process, there isn't the right way to do it as such. You just have to use your intuition and when you're struggling with something, move on to something else as best you can. Um, it's, it's not a simple process, it's not an easy job. But if you use your brain, you'll be fine. Here I'm cutting back the panels as best I can. I'm still leaving them slightly too long because when I make panels to back this, that's when I want to cut them down to where I want them. Um, it's easier to keep cutting than to replace metal that you've already cut out. Um, especially a few millimetres, it's a pain in the bum if you get it wrong. Yeah, you are going to have this happen on a project like this, uh, but use your brain, you'll be right. Just don't put too much heat into the panels as you're welding them.
One of the biggest things with my old couch was that I used a board underneath and then a foam mattress as the base and backing. Um, this was rather uncomfortable. I uh, still have to go back and fix that couch. Uh, for this couch, I wanted to try something different. Originally, I tried to use the back seat. Uh, that didn't really work out. So I used the front bench seat and had to reshape the boot to suit um, because the opening of the boot and the shape of the seat angle in opposite directions. Um, you'll see as the video goes on what I mean. Um, but a, an original bench seat out of a 50s car is quite a comfortable thing if done right. Now that I've finally worked out what seat I'm using in the couch, um, I'm just trying to square it up and make enough room for it to fit. Uh, you'll see that this process took quite a bit of time. Um, as I said earlier, the shape of the boot opening and the shape of the seat run at different angles. So, it's something you just have to work on. Um, because of the shape around the opening of the boot, this took quite a bit of work to get right. Originally, I was going to make this seat frame removable just to make it easier getting in and out of a standard doorway. Uh, that's one of my biggest things with these couches is to try and make them so that you don't need an extended doorway to get them through. Uh, my house, there's not a lot of options. Whether you use the side gate and the back door or whether you just use the front door, you're going to have to get it through the same space. Um, a lot of this is just manoeuvring it the right way to get it through that space. In the end I've decided to make the seat frame part of the couch, uh, mould it in, uh, because otherwise it just didn't look right. Uh, I want you to be able to look at this from any angle and not look at something ugly. It, it needs to be smooth, it needs to match in together. Um, You'll get what I mean as I go on. So it probably doesn't look like much, but basically I'm just trying to fill that gap. Um, I'll sheet metal over the top where you can see light, and weld the ends, and that should come up pretty good once it's all ground back and smooth. A little bit of filler and you won't know it's there. Um, yeah, I've got to do a fair bit of grinding now before I can actually start attaching the sheet metal because uh, I still haven't ground back the, the rear panel where I added the uh, inner structure. Anyway, back to it. Here I'm just using small sections of sheet metal to fill in the gap. Um, it does require a lot more welding and grinding. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm using mostly off-cut parts from door panels and so forth to make this work. I do have sheet metal long enough to fill this whole gap in one piece. Uh, but at the end of the day, it would have taken just as long, if not longer, to make it all look right and get it flowing together. And it realistically would have required the same amount of bulk.
I used the saws all to get into really tight corners that I couldn't get into with the grinder. Um, this just made it easier removing the square steel tube I'd already put into the edges. Now it's time to make the seat and boot opening fit to the same angles. Uh, basically everything fits in opposite angles when you're looking at the seat to the boot opening. Um, this took a fair bit of work. Um, I had to make a lot of fill-in panels once I had it all together where I wanted it. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel that it will make for a nice smooth transition. I'm just using some engineer's chalk to mark out the cut lines on the edges of the couch. All this has to be cut out and redone to make everything right. Uh, originally I was going to use the stock shape metal just set inwards, uh, but as I did this it turned out it just wasn't going to work. So I ground all the shape metal off the um, square steel tube I'd used and made new sections to replace it. At the end of the day it was easier to remake these sections and get it looking a lot smoother than to try and work with what we already had. Um, I worked with different dollies set into my vice um, and just hammer formed everything by hand. I really just used what was on hand to make the shapes I needed. This whole process took a lot of time. There was a lot of intricate de details that I had to get perfect. Um, you don't want lumps in the edges of the couch. Um, also, while I was working on it, using the seat frame as a base, I realized that I could use the side of the fins as an armrest. You'll notice in all of this that there's an awful lot of welding and grinding and cutting and so forth to get everything fitting comfortably together. Um, there's no getting around this when you're doing as much work to make things look right. At the end of the day, with the amount of work going on here, you're going to do a lot of welding and grinding. You need to take care and make sure there's not too much heat going in from welding or grinding. Uh, it's something that a lot of people can overlook. Um, realistically, it's all going to end up being fiberglass bogged and then eventually bogged with normal bog. Uh, but you're trying to keep all of that to a minimum and when you get to your normal bog, you don't want it falling down. Uh, fiberglass bogs reinforce, so it works a bit better in that respect. You'll notice that I'm cutting out the corners of the boot opening. Uh, these have rounded edges and with everything going on, it's just easier to square them up. Um, it's not particularly hard to do. Uh, basically cut out the corners and just weld a bit of sheet metal in there at the right angle and it'll look hot.
All right, now we're starting to fill in over the top of the square steel tube on the side of the couch. Uh, this is the piece that runs between the seat and the body. Um, with everything moved, there's a lot of work to do here. I'm starting at the top because that's the easiest part to work on. Uh, as you work down, you're going to have to start forming it up to suit the shape of the couch. Uh, it's not a big deal, but just take your time and don't stress out over it. Uh, you'll get it there. Anyway, you'll see what I do. Now that I've got the first piece in, I'm just going to keep working my way down the line. Um, you'll notice as I go, I have to put more and more form into the panels. Uh, this is just because the way that I made the steel structure of the inner doesn't quite conform to what I'm doing with the outer. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. I just need to make sure everything looks right when it's done. So at the top here, most of the sheet metal is pretty well flat. Um, the further you go down and around the curve of the side of the couch, the more curve you've got to put into the panel. Um, this is an ongoing process, you'll see as we go along, but at this stage all we're doing is just trying to sheet metal it in at the top and get a nice smooth surface. So this section I am filling where the lead seam is between the two sections of the quarter panel. Um, I wasn't particularly happy with how it fitted. Uh, once I melted all the lead out, which in an Australian car is quite a bit, I decided just to sheet metal over the top and make it as smooth as possible. Um, this way I can come back and just fiberglass bog over the top and add filler as needed. It's not perfect, but it is what it is. Alright, so at the moment I've jumped forward a little bit 
Um, I'm starting to work on where the door cards or side panels will land. Um, as you can see, I'm still working on the sides of the couch. Um, I'll get back to that pretty quickly. Um, this is just part of my method. I just I have to keep moving. If something holds me up, I move on to something else. And once I've worked through here, I move back to where I was. Uh, it's not perfect, but that is my method. Um, do what you will. It's just my way of doing things. These corner panels were quite difficult. Um, unfortunately, when I made the square steel tube to fit in behind the panel, I didn't make it conform properly. Um, I probably should have done a better job, uh, but at the time I didn't realise I'd be remaking the panels over the top. So at the end of the day, I had to shape these panels to follow the curve and put a 90 degree bend in them to match up to the square steel tube as well. Uh, it took a bit of time, um, a bit of patience and it meant that I had to make much shorter panels than I normally would um, but we got there in the end. Here I'm making the framework to hold the door cards or inner panel. Um, I've intentionally set these inside the metalwork because uh, on the other couch that I built, the fabric was pulling off the door cards because they were sitting flush with the outside of the panel um, and just general wear and tear will wreck them in very little time. You'll notice that the lower sections that I'm making, I have to put a 90 degree angle into them and then make them fit the shape of the couch. Uh, the reason it needs the 90 degree angle is because it needs to come back to the back of the, the upper framework I've already made. Um, obviously I didn't put any square steel tube on the sides of the seat. Uh, it was already strong enough so this was just an easier way of doing it. Uh, I just formed up these panels on the workbench. I used a bit of angle iron to clamp it down and just hammered it over uh, until I got a nice looking 90 degree angle. Here I'm just putting relief cuts into the side of the panel to make it conform. Um, at the time I didn't have my string stretcher so I just had to do it by hand and then re-weld these sections back together once it was in. Um, it's quite a process, it took me quite a long time to get it right. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't need expensive tools to make this work.
Making the upper sections was a lot easier because the uh, square steel tube that I'd made framework out of, uh, I could just weld flat sheet metal to it. Uh, all of these pieces are basically up outs that I had laying around. Um, you'll notice that I tried to make a bigger section in the four corners uh, for the panel clips to work into. Uh, the rest of it is just basically for the, the door card itself to sit against. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just to stop it from popping through or bending the tabs that hold the, the clips. Here I'm using some fairly reasonably thick paper that came in some flight packs we got. Um, this makes a great template to, to do the backing boards. Um, you'll see that I still fine tune them after this, uh, but this just helps make the job a bit faster. I realise the grind is probably not the right tool to be using here, but I'm not a woodworker um, and I just use what I have to make it work. Uh, at the end of the day, it did the job fine. Um, you know, these aren't perfect, but they will be padded and then covered, uh, so you won't see too many small imperfections in them. I've already marked the back of these with a Nikko pen. Um, basically what I did was mark out the four corner tabs and then pull the panel off and pre-drill it. Once it was pre-drilled, I put it back on and drilled through the metal and then slowly enlarged the holes until I could fit the trim clips in. Um, I know it doesn't really show it, but that's basically how I did it. Here I'm using some steel rod from a clothes era. Um, I just cut them up with the bolt cutters. Um, thankfully these were old enough that the paint was more or less falling off them so I just sat and cracked all the paint off until they were clean. And basically I'm tacking it and using the heat from the welding to bend it as I go. Um, these are pretty soft metal, especially once you heat them up so they bend quite easily. So again, you need to move your heat around to make sure it doesn't wreck the piece. You'll notice that I don't have enough length in one piece to do the whole thing. Um, it's not particularly hard to tack them back together. Just take your time 
and make sure they're lined up reasonably well so that your end product looks good. This does take a lot of time, um, but for what I'm trying to achieve here, it's worth doing. Uh, as I said earlier, I want every angle of the couch to look nice. Uh, so what I'm doing is adding the round edge so that I can actually add sheet metal to the back of it to cover the back of the couch. Um, I'm also adding a backing board below that section, uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about later in the video. Here I'm adding the shape metal. Uh, you'll notice that I didn't cut it back down to perfect size. Um, basically what I'm trying to achieve is get the shape right and looking right. Um, trying to make a template of this and get it all to fit perfectly first go around is not really going to happen. So it's easier to get the shape you want as you go. Uh, weld it in and grind back the excess off, off the top. Uh, as long as it fits the bottom fairly well and you get the curves right, it's not a big deal. You'll notice I, I had to do these sections in multiple pieces as well, um, mainly because of the curves on the ends of the couch or the end of the seat, um, but also just because it's easier to do it in multiple sections than try and make it all in one go and get it right. Um, I honestly I think I would have thrown out more metal than I used if I had done it that way. It does mean a little bit more welding and grinding, but I think it's the easiest way to make something this complicated. Here I'm getting ready to put the back side panels in. Um, I needed to cut it back a bit further. I marked it out a little bit better than I had originally. Um, there are a few spots where I cut it back too far. Um, made it a little bit harder to weld up in the long run. But by not cutting the whole section down too far, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Now I'm making the template for the back panels. Um, I ended up cutting the sheet metal slightly too big because I wanted to be able to cut it down or grind it back to super shape. Um, this is just easier than, again, cutting it back too far and having an extra gap to fill. Now that I've got the panel cut, I'm just going to clamp it down and start tacking it in um, in the basic area I wanted. Once it's all tacked down, I'll start grinding back the edges to get the shape that I really need. Um, again, move your heat around, don't just stay in one spot. You don't want to warp these panels. Um, I did have a little bit of an issue here because the panels I used were actually from a door skin and they've got a slight curve to them. 
gone to finish enclosing the back of the couch. Uh, I chose to do this just because it cleans up the look. Um, leaving it open leaves a lot of ugliness visible. Um, I used MDF instead of sheet metal because I wanted this panel to be removable. Um, and also because using this bigger sheet of metal, uh, you get a lot of oil canning in it. Uh, I didn't feel like putting bead rolls into sheet metal and stuff around that way. Uh, it will be a bit harder to paint this piece, but at the end of the day, we'll get there. Now I'm using a bit of angle iron at the base of the seat to help hold in the, the back panel. Um, this will have rib nuts set into it. Um, I'm going to have six bolts holding in the panel uh, so that it's removable. Um, I'll paint everything the same colour just so that it blends in reasonably well. Um, I'm sure I could get some plugs to fit in the holes if I really needed to, but I think it'll be alright. As a side note, this little rechargeable torch that I've got in my hand makes it much easier when you're trying to do intricate welding or trying to see small gaps and so forth. Um, it doesn't seem to affect the welding helmet and it just makes life so much easier on me. It also has a magnetic base so I quite often just stick it to things while I'm welding or grinding um, and it just helps me do a bit better of a job. Time to dry out some holes and start putting some rib nuts in. Um, I drilled through both panels uh, at the same time. Um, I had to enlarge the holes in the angle line and put the rib nuts in obviously. And I also had to drill out around the head of the bolt so that it was slightly down some into the MDF so it wouldn't sit around. At the top I've just used a bit of flat bar welded onto the square steel tube um, that runs across the back of the couch. Um, I then mark the board from the back to show where the, the tabs were. Pre-drilled the, um, the MDF and then drilled through those holes into the flat bar to get my holes to hold the top. Um, not particularly hard a little bit more work um, but that way everything lined up nicely and then just drilled my holes the same way I did with the base. Here I got a little bit impatient and wanted to see the back of the couch look a bit nicer than just having uh, MDF sitting on the back of it. I'm just using a few spare rattle cans I had lying around that were half full with that. Um, I wasn't going to use them for anything else anyway. Um, this may come back to bite me later, but we'll see. I feel that the back of this couch looks a lot nicer than the, the first one I built. Uh, the first one I built, I didn't add this filler panel in the middle. Um, and I think I've done a much better job building the couch overall.
Mounting the bottom part had to be stumped for a while. Um, in the end I figured the easiest way of doing it was just to use two pieces of angle iron on each side to bolt together. Um, one welded to the bumper and one welded to the, the seat itself. Here I've clamped the two pieces of angle iron together so that I can bolt them together before welding the mounts to the body. Um, this was just the best way of making sure everything lined up. Um, it is a little bit difficult to get it on and off sometimes. Uh, I wish I had it twisted the angle iron so that it was a little bit easier to, to get on and off. Um, but it fits and that's the main thing. I'm working from underneath because I wanted to have the bumper sitting exactly where I wanted it before I welded anything on. Um, to begin with, I just tacked everything to make sure, it remeasured everything, and then welded it solid. You'll see once I get the bumper back off how I did it. Um, basically, it's just welded to the square steel tube that runs across the couch and then onto the body with some standoffs to get the right angle I wanted. Here I'm just cutting out the fuel filler section. Um, I want this couch to be smooth. So I've cut this out and used a bit of wire from the clothes error to add in the ridge in the bodywork um, to try and get it all sort of flowing together. And then I've just added a, sheet, a piece of sheet metal on either side and slowly welded that in. Um, again, it's not perfect, but a bit of five glass filler and so forth, and it'll come up fine. These are little magnets that I'm using to hold up the sheet metal at the moment. Um, I bought them from our local hardware. Uh, I think it cost me $8 to buy a pack of 12 or something along those lines. Um, but I find them rather handy. The uh, thing is you don't want to weld too close to them because it just it messes with your welder. Um, but just to get the basics tacked in, they really help. And as you, know, as you get it stronger and where you want it, you remove the magnets. Uh, you might have to manipulate the metal to, to make it all work as you go, but it's pretty straightforward. So now I'm just adding a bit of wire to the top of the bumper bar so that I can sheet metal over the top of it and just smooth it out. Originally I was going to move the opening for the number plate um, because our number plates are bigger than the hole that was there and I wanted to sink it down so it didn't catch on the back of your legs. Um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't going to look smooth enough for what I was trying to do with this couch. So I just deleted it. Now I'm just starting to add the splash pan or gravel pan. Um, this I just made out of flat sheet metal. Um, I didn't have an extra original splash pan to work with. Uh, well, I did, but it was just too far gone to, to use to completely rust it out. Um, so this for me was just the easiest way to get around it. Um, I wish I had made it in slightly longer strips to make it easier to keep it level all the way through, um, but it'll come up good enough for a couch.
Here I'm just adding wire to the edge of the splash apron. Um, this serves two purposes. Basically, it helps strengthen the whole panel uh, without having to tip an edge, um, and also just gives it a nice rounded appearance as it goes underneath the bumper. Um, the original one had a, a 45 degree angle or so on it, uh, just to pretty it up. All right, so we've got the panel more or less in now. Um, does need some more welding just down through here. Um, trying to make it strong enough that I can fiberglass fill the edges. Um, basically, it needs to be strong enough that none of this is going to break out. There's a few areas I'm not happy with. I'll go back over. Um, it's a little bit low over through here. I'll panel bait that back here. And some of the wire edging that I put in is just a little bit low. So I'll mark that out and fix it up at a later date. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this build. There are some minor imperfections, but it's a lot better than the couches that I've previously built. Um, give it a go yourself might be surprised what you can make. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.